Welcome to our workshop about building the apps like a pro. And my name is Isna Broniszewska and I work for TrueFIDA. And these are my colleagues, Michał, Bartek and Przemek. They will help me today. So if you have any questions or problems, let them know, they will help you for sure. All right, so maybe let's start from what the app is. Anyone wants to answer this question? What is the app, the centralized application? Okay, can we have a second mic so we can handle questions? <laughs> Where is it? Second one? Yeah. Where? Uh, thanks. <laughs> Uh, a D app is an application that rather runs on a centralized server, runs on a decentralized network like Ethereum or an L2. Yeah, kind of. So is it like UI for the centralized system? Maybe application that uses the centralized system or maybe application that uses smart contracts and blockchain. And maybe an application that has no central server. So like, it's hard to define, like find one simple definition of decentralized application, but apparently it's very easy to build. We've used that, of course. So let's see first how to build the centralized application, the app. We have different Ethereum API providers like Alchemy and Infura, and we can connect them, right? So uh, we can get this connection to blockchain by them. And we have different blockchain calls, two of them actually. Read, that are totally free, and you only read the state of the blockchain, uh, while the second one are write type of uh, calls, and it costs gas fee. It requires wallet connection. Additionally, it changes the state of the blockchain. That's why it needs private key and wallet. So these are the examples of such blockchain calls. First is read, and here we just check the balance of the this address and the second one right right call we just send transaction to the to the address so that's why we need private key and the wallet let's talk about blockchain state for a second it's all about mining blocks right and each new block is from 10 to 20 seconds so each new block uh, is like around 15 seconds or something like that and the state might change so each time we need to check whether the new block didn't change our, our state. So our application needs to be updated very often. Ideally, each new block, we should update our state in the application, right? I hope you agree with me. Additionally, the app is very complex. Like typical application interacts with a lot of smart contracts, a lot, which is, let's say, X. It might be 50, it might be 100. And it needs to update state very often, frequently. Ideally, each new block. So it's like X calls per 50, 30 seconds. So that's a lot. Let's review leading API provider costs. And you can see that it costs a lot if you want to optimize your application. You can pay up to $1,000 per month if you want to optimize your application if you have too many smart contracts interactions. But we have something like multi-call and it helps us aggregate. It's like actually it's smart contract that helps us aggregate all these different calls into one simple uh, single request. So there is no problems with optimization, right? So we can just use this smart contract. It has this function aggregate so we can batch all these calls in one request. Additionally, we have guarantee that all these values we get from from the blockchain will will be from the same block which we, then we will have state consistency which is great so this is how it looks like with without and with multi-call so without we have this a lot of different requests to different smart contracts but with multi-call we have only one call to multi-call and then multi-call calls all these different smart contracts for us so let's summarize the app requirements we have we should have like request we should um, like update uh, our state ideally each new block 
right? We should have consistent state, so all the data should be taken from the same block. Additionally, we should like optimize our app so we won't spam API with a lot of requests. But don't worry, UseDub does it all, so you don't have to worry about all these different multi-calls and uh, updating state each new block. It's everything built in UseDub. So let's go to examples of code, how to use UseDub. So here we have an example how to connect to a network because we need to have like a wallet connection to interact with smart contracts, right? So see how simple is that? We just get, we have this use eaters function that we can get from UseDub and it returns us activate browser wallet, which is a function. And when we call this function, we have our like, like UseDub will ask uh, MetaMask to connect to, to, your, to your application. So it's that easy. In, I mean, in these few lines, you can connect your wallet uh, with MetaMask or any other wallet. And in this case, it's like browser wallet, so it's MetaMask, but yeah. And additionally, this account, it's just the address that is currently connected. So that's really simple. Iterbalance, this is how we can get it. Another function, use iterbalance, and it gets account, which is the address you want to check the address, uh, the balance, and then, that's it. And the, the nice thing is that this iter balance you get from use iter balance function will be like, of course, will be put in the multi-call call. So it will be only one call. Each new hook you use from a uh, used up will generate only one call each new block. And the state will be updated on each new block. So that's additionally really cool. Additionally, we have another example of a nice helper function, which is use token balance, and this is how you can use it. You just pass the address of token you would like to check the balance on, and then the account uh, address that you would like to check this balance account. And you get updated each, on each new block like balance in this case. But you need to remember about one thing that is really important here because we need to wrap your application with the app provider that we also provide uh, as used up and it needs configuration for example here we just passed um, read only chain id so the chains that we would like to support in read only mode and read only urls for example our own uh, infura or alchemy or any other api provider url so we can support anything and you need to pass this config to the app provider. So that is the only requirement, and only then inside of this app you can use any hook we provide from use that. Additionally, we support multi-layer, multi-chain, uh, multi-chain. So you can, for example, here we have this uh, switching networks function. So you just import switch network, and each uh, and this function will ask your uh, wallet to switch network. For example, in this case. We want to send transaction, but we want to send this transaction only if we have uh, we are on mainnet. So in this case, we check whether the chain current current chain ID current in wallet chain ID uh, is not mainnet, and if it's not, then we switch. We um, we want to enforce on the user to switch network, and this is how it can be done with used up. And this is how we can check, for example, in read only mode on different uh, chains. Uh, for example, iter balance. So for each hook we provide, you can add additional parameter, which is chain ID, an, an object that gets chain ID. And this is how you can get, for example, mainnet, arbitrum, and ZK sync balance in one place. And this is super easy to use. All right. So that's it from theory. And now we can go to some practice and practical stuff. We can start coding. So what we are going to do today is we want to create an application that will interact with um, Girly USDC that is deployed there and will use UseDAP and all these different, its different uh, features. So these are the requirements that in my opinion this app should have, but if you feel like you would like to do something else, feel free to do that. So in my opinion, we should first start with connecting our wallet. Right, so we should have like this button connect and then connect with MetaMask or any other wallet. Then we would like to display our ether balance and to prove you that it can be multi-chain, um, we can do it on Girly and Girly Optimism. 
So let's display uh, two different balances. Then let's display girl USDC balance as well, our balance, of course. Then probably it will be zero. So let's make this application to mint ourselves some USDC and then transfer this girl USDC to anyone. Maybe it can be your friend next to you, sitting next to you. Yeah, so that's what, in my opinion, we could today, today uh, do today. So yeah, and we prepared two tracks for you. Uh, you can scan this QR code and go to Code Sandbox, where is prepared the boilerplate so you can start coding uh, with us. And we have two different tracks. First one is easy track, so we are going to live code with you. So uh, I will be doing all these different uh, steps, and you can follow me. And of course, we have here Bartek, Przemek, and Michał who will help you uh, if you get lost. And additionally, we have pro track, so you can do it yourself. We have here the requirements uh, displayed, so you will know what to do. Oh, something happened, so <laughs> okay, now you should see. And uh, great. And uh, yeah, if you get lost, you can switch from one track to the other. So if you go to pro track and you decide, yeah, no, I, I can't do that, I can't do this, and I would like to switch to easy track, someone from my colleagues will help you to get uh, up to speed with us, and then you can continue. Additionally, you can join our Telegram group, and if you don't have a go early eat if on your account, we can send you. <laughs> Michal prepared uh, prepared a script that will send you automatically uh, some go early if. So yeah, go to this Telegram group if you don't have go early if, or you can use of course faucet, go early faucet. But yeah, it will be easier for you to just go to this Telegram group, send your address, and we'll uh, send you. Uh, send you girly if right and additionally we have something super extra for you because there is a chance to win a ledger nano s so uh, we decided that okay so anyone who creates the application with my help or uh, yourself then there will be a chance like one like last 10 minutes of the workshop we're going to allow you to present your solution and how you did that, and the best, the most interesting application will win a Ledger Nano. Right? How does it sound? I hope cool. <laughs> of course, we won't get you the real Ledger. We'll give you a gift card, right? Because it's not safe to get your Ledger from anyone, right? You know that, I hope. All right. So, yeah. Not this one. <laughs> All right. So, let's go back to uh, this slide. Yes. Yeah, so, any questions so far? Everything's clear. Okay, we have one question there. I can pass you a mic. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose not yet, but uh, this work with uh, all the scaffolding tools like uh, Create React App and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, it's it's working automatically with. Create React app and uh, yeah yeah okay yeah that's all thank you sure yeah so for this workshop uh, for workshop we prepared like a code sandbox but you can use it with Create uh, React app yeah all right um, any other questions maybe all right so if there are no questions let's go to coding right now so. Who chose uh, ProTrack? Raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there are some people. All right. And who is going to code with me on EasyTrack? Great. Perfect. So let's go to work. All right. Let me make it bigger. Yeah, so did you manage to scan the QR code? Are you on the same page as I am? That's important because this is where we are going to work together. Uh, do you have it? All right, so we can scan it again. So this link leads you to Code Sandbox. And uh, there are some ready components that we are going to use. And this is all right. So are you with me on this page? 
Did you manage to load it? I know the internet connection is really bad here. And there on the uh, wall, there is like a password to another Wi-Fi password for workshop specifically. So it might be useful for you to use that one. <laughs> or maybe your, uh, your mobile one will be fine as well. All right, guys, so if you have any questions, just raise your hands and we'll help you. All right, so are we ready to start coding? I hope so. All right, so if you are with me, uh, then let's go to app.js. And this is where we are going to start our uh, coding. Actually, let's go to index.js. <laughs> and this is where we are going to start. All right, so I hope you remember what I said before, but always, before we start using UseDAP, we need to start with wrapping our application in the app provider. And in my opinion, index.js is the perfect place to start and to do that. So let's first here import the app provider. And you can do it like this. From UseDAP core. Not like this. Like this. Can you make the font bigger? That was the question that okay. I heard. Okay. Is it better now? A uh, question there? Is it better? Can you see it? Great. All right. So we can import the app provider from uh, UseDAP at usedap slash core, and this is the exact name. All right, and now, as you remember, I told you that we need to create configuration file, uh, configuration object uh, for that. Um, so let's name it config as always, and it needs to be an object. And what we need there is like read only, uh, chain ID, it might be, for example, let's start maybe with, yeah, go early. Let's import chain ID from use that as well. So we can use it. Chain ID dot, as you can see, use that supports a lot of different uh, chains and go early is one of them. Great, so we have this config file Ready for now, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, and also, yeah, let's add also read-only URLs. And that's another object. With, and keys are the uh, chain ID, uh, chain ID actually, chain ID. So in this case, let's use query as well. And then we can use uh, get the default provider function from uh, that we can import from Eters. I hope you know Eters library is a really great library. If you use it, then I hope you like it. And this is how we can create this uh, read-only URL from uh, for config conf configuration. All right. And now we have our config, so we can pass it to the app provider. So first, let's wrap our application. We can do it here with the app provider, like this, and pass their config. Always remember to close text. All right, so this is how it should look like. Everyone follows? Is everything clear? Nice. So now we have this um, our app uh, wrapped with uh, the app provider, and now we can go to our app and actually start coding. So as I said before, let's start from connection of our wallet and how we can do that. First, we need to import use eaters function. And we can do it like this. From 
use that core as well because this is our like core function and it you will see in the future that it returns a lot of different useful helpers functions and one of it is actually activate browser wallet function and we of course need to call this function right we can add here button with on click function we'll just call this activate browser wallet function right let's display connect text on this button and voila you can see this button and when we click on it it should ask our metamask to connect i know the font is really small but yeah and as you can see it works and that was only one one line of code touch or two lines but okay how can i know that it worked that i'm connected to this application of course i should display my address right the address of the account that i'm i connected so let's import account and that's and let's display it and this is how we can do that we need to make sure that it's, this account exists because then it will be just undefined and as you can see we we can see actually the address so it worked it worked well all right so now let's display my balance and how we can do that we can just simply use another great uh, function so maybe let's first import this function so you won't get lost again we import this function from used up core so we can do it after comma use iter balance it's called all right and now let's just use this function let's call this iter balance and then use this function and let's pass there my address and let's display balance maybe let's add a new line all right we have an error and do you know how to fix that maybe and he has an idea I feel like yeah so yeah that's just an object so what's used up like use iter balance uh, returns in this function big number exactly that's how we should just pass it like make it uh, yeah this string right for example here in this case let's start with string and now it should work <laughs> yeah let's wait for a second Yeah, so use that will return a um, big number so in this case we can parse it to string but um, i prefer to not use like string and you will see why because it will display a lot of different zeros okay let's see why it's not working let's try to uncomment it uh, comment it and then see yeah it's probably the internet Yeah, I, I use my own <laughs> Yeah, already. <laughs> but too many people in one building, and that's how it ends. All right, let's wait for a second. But yeah, so what we will see on the screen when we uh, parse uh, iter balance as a string? We will see some number with 18 zeros, right? Because that's a big number, and that's why we shouldn't display such thing to user because they will get like you know uh, they will see what what's happens what happening why do i have so many uh, eaters right so normally i really like to use eaters functions for that and uh, this is how you can uh, get this function so i always use utils parse eater not format eater, sorry. I always confuse these two. Yeah. 
All right, and this is how I always like to display balance of ether, of course. For different tokens, you like to, you would like to use probably format units and then pass as the second argument a number of decimals that this token uses. All right. Uh, workshop Wi-Fi, you suggest. Maybe something is happening. Oh, nice. All right. Let's connect again. Again, click. Nice. All right. And we display account. And now let's try to display ether balance. But still the internet. All right, can you see it? The balance, nice. All right, so now maybe we could uh, display balance on Optimism Gairly, right? Because we can do that as well. But first we would need to add Conto configuration file, right? All right, so let's not do that right now. Let's, <laughs> let's go to the next step. And when we have time, we can um, go back to um, Optimism Gairly. All right, so as I said before, we would like to create an application to interact with USDC that is deployed on Gairly. And you can find this address of uh, this USDC in the addresses.js file. And if you are a smart contract developer and you know how to, or maybe not uh, you are a developer, but you know how to read the code of smart contract, you will see that this, this contract has open open uh, mint function, so anyone can mint any amount of token they want. So we are going to use this test uh, USDC for this uh, workshop purposes. All right. But first, let's just display balance um, of our address in this USDC. Is there any problem and you need maybe help? <laughs> so anyone needs help? And yeah, if you are coding and you get lost or you would like some help or you are, you know, uh, on ProTrack and you need help, uh, Bartek, Michal, could you handle that question? And maybe you see that it's easy, but you haven't started with us and you would like to join us, then also raise your hand and we are going to help you uh, with anything. All right. Uh, yeah, I can see you. Someone will come to you in a second because we have. Uh, uh, yeah, index.js. And this is how it looks like. Uh, yeah, anyone need some help? Raise your hand, and uh, Przemek is free for some help. <laughs> the person in the back. Uh, you need help? Przemek, could you help there? Yeah, uh, the address of the smart contract is in the file addresses.js and you have it in the sandbox. It's there. So you can find it on the left side. Uh, no, no, no. Utils is important from Eaters. Eaters, yeah. Eaters. It's a great library. I love Eaters. Seriously. <laughs> All right, guys, can we move on? <laughs> okay, I'll wait a few seconds. Uh, there, uh, Bartek, we had a question there. No, it's fine? No, it's not there. Ah, okay, address, okay. Anyone needs help? Raise your hand, Bartek is free, and he can help you. Yeah, index.js, here you have it. So we imported the app provider and chain ID from used app core, and additionally get default provider from meters. All right. Perfect. So let's go back to app.js. And now let's display USDC, girly USDC balance of my account. It's probably zero, but I would be surprised if it wasn't zero. All right. So no, let's start from importing the, uh, the function. The function is called use token balance, written like that. All right. And now let's just get it from blockchain. Like this. And we need to 
And here, as you can see, we uh, there are two arguments. First is token address, so we can use the address that I have here. It's called USDC and I export it, so we can just import it like this. Import USDC from addresses. Perfect, so now we have the address of USDC and we can pass it as a first argument of the use token balance function. And the second argument is my account address, like this. All right, and now let's just simply display this balance on our UI. Let's add another, enter, and let's just display it. But still, this is a big number, so we need to first let's start with making it, it string. All right, let's wait a second. And yeah, we have one big zero. All right. So now we can do something more difficult and we can call like send a transaction to USDC and we can mint our um, some USDC token. All right, and this, I hope I remember the syntax for it, but we'll definitely, we'll need to use use contract function, function. All right, and this is how you can import it from used up core as well. All right, and this function is really interesting and it gets three different arguments and these are more advanced, so I hope you won't get lost. And if you get lost, we'll help you um, with that. So this function will return um, send function like that. So we can get it like that because it's an object and one of the um, parameters it uh, like returns uh, values are, is send function. And this is the send function we will call uh, to just send this transaction. And we can use it like that. So use contract function and you can see uh, that we'll need contract. Contract, function, name, and uh, what else? Options. All right, so let's start with contract because that's um, tough to create. All right, so contract is an abstract of this contract, so let's name it USDC. And it will be in contract that if you know Ether's library, you will know this contract. Let's import maybe, yeah. Let's import this contract from Ether's first. And we need to create this contract. Again, what it needs. First, it needs this address. So we can just simply pass USDC in the address. And then we need contract interface and we need to create it. So let's import it from ETHERS as well. And this is how you can do that. It's hidden in providers dot interface, not, not providers, but utils, sorry. Utils dot interface. And that's an object, so we need to create it. And let's see what it needs. It needs fragments of ABI. So in this case, for USDC, we'll, we are going to need only mint functions. So for now, let's just create it by hand. So it's just an array of signatures of these functions. So let's, name, let's create it like that. It will get address and value, which is u in two, five, six. And this is interface we need for this contract. Are you guys following? Is it fine? All right. So what else do we need for this contract? Address, interface, and should be it. All right, so now we can use this USDC contract to get this send function. All right, what is the second argument we need here? It's function name, so we can just use this mint function. So here we just need to pass the name of the function. 
we want to use. So if we want to use more functions, then we can just add more functions to the interface we created before, right? Like send. And like in production, you would probably need to have like, you know, the interface that was the uh, result of compilation of your smart contract. So you won't type each function separately. But for this workshop, we are just like, you know, using this simpler version. All right. And now, actually, that's it. And now we can try to use this function and see if it works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's give me one second, maybe. Let me make this interface. Like this. Right. Can you see it now? Is it better? Hmm? Oh, okay. That's a nice suggestion. Thank you. All right, guys. Any questions so far? Anyone needs help? Raise your hand. And the guys here can help you. All right. So now let's come again. Oh, question. Um, Bartek, can I'll you pass you a mic. Here we go, my man. Is is the um, is the ethers provide? I saw you you put ethers providers at um, at import. But no, no, it's not necessary. Okay, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. That's yeah. that's that's all. Yeah, sorry, that was my bad. <laughs> all right, we will just need uh, utils from eaters. All right, and now I hope it works. <laughs> all right, so now we want to trigger this transaction somehow, and we can do it by adding additional button like this button with text sent sent message, right? All right, so I know this is not the prettiest application you ever seen. All right, so create, let's create another um, button. And here, let's add like this. All right, and what we would like to do on click, we want to actually trigger this send. So send this transaction. And let's do it like this because we need to pass argument to this function. Um, if you know ERC20 inter, uh, standards, you know that mean function gets two arguments. One of these is address of the address you would like to mint uh, this token to, and the second one is the value, right? So first, maybe let's use the account we are connected to, and let's start with one, just simply one. All right. And now let's test it if it works. All right. So, as you can see, it triggered MetaMask window. And we can see here that something is happening. All right, let's confirm random application, confirm MetaMask transactions. <laughs> All right. And now let's wait a second for this, uh, for this transaction to be minted. And we expect that if we did it correctly, the balance of, the U of USDC should change, right? And voila, it changed. Nice. <laughs> cool. So as you can see, USDAP updates all of that with each new block. So it takes some time. Of course, we have internet here, uh, really poor, but yeah. All right, so are you following? Have you managed to send this transaction with me? Who sent the transaction? Nice. <laughs> Great, we have three, three people who did that. All right, guys, so who got lost and needs some help with sending this transaction? Bartek, uh, after, uh, yeah, behind you. <laughs> All right, anyone else? would like some help with that. Uh, we have another person, question, would you like to get me, Mike? I was, wondering, I was wondering where we're getting the USDC from. 
Yes, so USDC is from uh, address file, I, addresses. I created this uh, file with this address. Oh, okay. So you all have it. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, app.js. All right, so I will give you like uh, one minute to... Uh, could you pass the mic? Uh, I was just saying, like, there was a link at the beginning to get uh, the girly um, yeah. ethers, um, right? This is the link to our Telegram group. Oh. And if you send there your address, okay. Michal will send you, transfer you some girly if. Yeah, we already funded a bunch of uh, accounts. Please send yours as well. Uh, question or help? Help. Uh, Michal, could you go there? Where are you? And there. Uh, could you raise your hand? Oh, thanks. Nice. And yeah, guys, so if you need help, just raise your hand. Przemek is there waiting for... Yeah, I'll go back to, uh, to the app.js. And in the meantime, I'll add some changes to uh, to the application so it looks nicer. So here. Not like this. Nice. Better now. Let's do the same with Ether Balance. Like this, nice. All right. So who is ready to move on to the next step? Perfect, perfect, we are ready, great. So maybe let's change it because as you can see here, uh, the balance is one, right? But we know that USDC has more decimals than just uh, zero. Uh, do you know how many decimals uh, do USDC have? 18, no, it's not 18. Six, exactly, great. All right, so what we need to do here is to form, like, first of all, we need to actually send, mint ourselves, not one, like, base like um, unit of USDC. Actually, we would like to mint ourselves one USDC, right? One full USDC. So let's use utils for that. And it's parse units. And it will need us to parse um, string. And yeah, and the second argument is the number of decimals. So like that. All right, so as you can see here, instead of just passing simple one, I'm just uh, using utils.parse units uh, with six decimals, so we'll have one full USDC uh, minted. All right, so let's try again, mint some USDC, but this time it won't be just one unit of USDC, we will go for full USDC. And again, if you have any questions, just raise your hand. If you would like to speed up, get out of speed with us. All right, let's confirm this transaction. And now let's wait a second. And simple question, do we have any volunteer to present in five minutes? Nice, perfect. Any other volunteers present their solutions? So no, oh, okay, we'll have competition then. Perfect. All 
All right, it takes some time. Nice. So we minted more USDC, but now we need to display it differently, right? Because it's just one and a bunch of zeros. So let's use format units similarly to the previous one with six decimals. Nice. So we managed to do that. All right, and now our final step of this workshop, which is sending USDC to someone else. So we minted ourselves one USDC, and now let's transfer it to someone else. All right, so our first step in this should be adding to interface transfer function, right? Because for now, our application doesn't know that ERC20, like USDC, has this functionality. All right, so let's add function transfer. And do you know what arguments transfer function gets in ERC20? First is address, right? For whom? And the second is value, right? So again, we use address and you, you int 256. Great. So we have our interface. And now, again, we can use use contract function. But this time, we'll need to name this send differently because it won't work. Yeah. It's the same as mint, but the name is different, right? So the arguments are the same. All right, so let's go back to use contract function. Let's name this parameter transfer, okay? And now we won't have collision. All right, and now here also let's use transfer, right? So we, we change the name of the function we would like to call, right? All right, so now we can actually use this function. So let's add another button. I know it's not pretty application. And another on-click function. Let's name it send USDC. And now let's call this transfer with arguments. So, all right, so where should we send this USDC? Uh, I mean, where? I mean, what account address? What address? Maybe if you are on the Telegram group, you can take different uh, address, not yours, but someone else's, and then send this person some USDC, right? So, yeah. Yeah, so in my case, it will be my second MetaMask account. Right. So I will. So here you can pass just a simple string, right? The address will be just a string. And now we can transfer. So let's start with simple one, or you can change the, uh, actually use different numbers. So because if we, everyone, will send like one way of USDC, then we won't see the change, right? Because everyone will be the same number. All right, so I will send three maybe. All right, and uh, anyone needs help? Raise your hand. Bartek is here to help or Przemek. Okay, we have someone there. Great, and now in the meantime, I will try to click send USDC and try to do that. All right. Let's wait a second. <laughs> Cool. Up, yes, sure. 
Uh, Bertek, would you like to help my be there? You will find the person in the red shirt. All right, guys, we have 10 minutes uh, till the end of the workshop, so maybe the people that would like to present Get ready and you'll show us your uh, solution. All right, guys, so we managed to send USDC. Okay. So, yeah, that would be it, guys. I hope you managed to do the same thing as me. And, uh, yeah, if we have volunteers, then, yeah, maybe let me just tell you thank you for your, um, for your being here. And thank you for coding with us. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just don't hesitate. <laughs> and raise your hand if you have questions. <laughs> thank you. All right. And now we have some time for presentations. So if you would like to show you uh, show us your uh, solution feel free to come here and get a chance to win a ledger <laughs> yeah come. round of applause for <laughs> volunteer right. uh, c or hdm Oh, she's. Yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the workshop and that now you will use, uh, use that okay. for, you know, your application development because I hope you, you know how it, Right now, how easy is that, right? All right. Okay, so I coded it into my uh, little website and you can connect with your wallet. And here you see the address, you can disconnect again. And... Yeah, but the app looks amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Let's see if it comes up again. Okay, and the special feature I can send to myself. It's just the wrong text on the button, I think. And I can send to others by copy-pasting an address. And then I can send directly to them. All right, and like this? can we see the code and how is it used in your step? Okay. So what I do is that I take an input okay. with the target value and I set a state and then I use that state in the send for nice. my transfer account. Nice. Thank you. That's Great. Okay. Any other volunteers? All right. In the meantime, guys, if you have any questions regarding used app, feel free to ask them. Okay. Can we, yeah, just do more presentations, like small, two minutes? Yeah, I just, uh, I, I did a 
All right, guys, we don't have any more time, but you can show it um, outside of the room and then we will get a winner. All right, thank you.